2017 budget for the fire department. Um, we have done our best to maintain a uh, low profile. There were some areas that we tried to increase because we felt that it was necessary, especially in the training areas. Um, and we realigned some areas to better reflect what we have seen over time, especially with the five-year moving average. So um, I'm ready to begin, and I'll take questions any time. How's that? Okay. Okay. Um, basically, and the way I started when I first had to present the budget to you guys in, in front of you, I said, well, you know, I'd like to be brief, so let's start at the back page. Uh, if you want to just take a peek at the back page, you'll see that this budget represents a 4.37% increase. And much of that is, uh, is the result of some of our requests as well as additional contractual obligations that have gone about with the wage items that have gone through with the raises that were um, delivered this year, and thank you for that. Uh, in the administration level, regular wages remains, uh, all of the wage items that you see, they're within contractual obligations, and that's the reason for their increases. Um, let's see. Uh, gasoline, we see an increase in that, but the way we're doing gasoline now, we're changing the way we did it before. We're no longer with the state. You know that we're using the WEX system. Uh, our gallonage is actually attributed to, or it's a, uh, it's being, the data is being collected by the WEX system, and then Christy is actually working with that? Yep. Okay, so um, the increase comes from real dollars realized and also gallons used. Um, below that line, you see a $7,500 request uh, for new equipment. We are in need of a new copier. I had come before you last year to request a new copier, and we weren't able to purchase it. We had a copier that has now been, uh, it was rendered obsolete for several reasons. First, it, it was broken, and it was costing a, a significant amount to repair. Um, and then the, the machine was repaired technically for a little while. Uh, we were using it as a fax machine, um, and it, it became obsolete with the software system. It was in, unable to work with the Windows system, the upgrade that we received, so it wasn't able to talk, and it was no longer functioning as a copier. Uh, we've disposed of that. Uh, through the console of Mr. Welch, and that was taken down to DPW uh, with the memory erased, Mr. Welch, as we had discussed. So we're seeking a copier for the fire station right now. Currently, the one that we're using uh, wasn't fire prevention. They're, now it's a communal copier, and it's uh, also on its last legs. The one that we disposed of was um, t almost 10 years old, and it was purchased used. Uh, this one here is at least that old. It's, it, I believe it's eight years old, and it's still it's barely functioning, so we're looking to do that. Uh, any questions in the administrative portion? Okay. Any do questions? You, do you want to hold questions until the end? Uh, do you? We can do it either way. I mean, it, as we're right, going then, through it, if, it, you, if it's, it, sometimes it's easier that way, but okay. you happen to go back. If, All right. Uh, then. Any questions? I do. Go ahead. Okay. Under tuition uh, reimbursement. Yes, sir. There was, there was uh, 3,000 requested and 2,500. There was, um, I just wondered. Sure. So tuition reimbursement line item uh, was placed in last year with uh, the help of Mr. Welch uh, to help us meet the contractual obligation, or actually the town regulation for tuition reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, initially, as that program was rolled out, we had a candidate who uh, met the criteria and went through two classes and requested reimbursement and did so. Uh, several others have requested now that they would like to use that line item. So it was my goal to bump that line item initially uh, to basically service the need. So that was okay. that was the main item. Okay. Fine. Rick, any questions? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Phil, any questions? Okay. Very good. So we'll now go on to fire suppression. Sure. So regular wages haven't changed except for the fact of the uh, contractual obligations. Further on down, you see several changes in the line items for uh, overtime wages, overtime callback, sick leave coverage, and vacation coverage. These line items were uh, adjusted, and um, Ms. Pulliam and Mr. Welch uh, saw fit to, to assist us in doing so as a better means of record keeping for several years, and I don't have to tell the board that uh, we were under default budgets. And some of these line items remain legacy items. They weren't adjusted. We were initially described uh, two years ago to come in with a zero-based budget, and again last year, so that we could keep all costs down. So those line items didn't change, but it also did not represent what was being expent uh, annually on that line item as a result of all of the overtime that was being generated for several reasons, bereavement and you know several of the, the lines that that one covers. Um, the adjustment more closely fits with a five-year moving average. 
Uh, as you may or may not understand from seeing the numbers in the one on the left of this, if you see the 2015 actual, we're at 325,000. Uh, last year was very similar. We had a very large outlay because of all the injuries. And I know that I've been before you to talk about injuries and how we've had people out for an extensive period of time. Uh, in fact, we've actually had uh, two or three recent uh, employees that had to retire out or were, were at the end of their um, benefit cycle as a result of injuries that were received on the job. And now their positions became vacant. We're hiring new because of that. Uh, we are taking measures to eliminate the injuries, and in fact, if you remember, I was in front of you, I believe, to request about a power load system, and that will help us to get patients into the ambulance. Um, it was a significant expense, but I think that it, over time, will pay for itself in quick order. So the, the 174000 for the line item over, overtime wages is, uh, is in line with the five years past that we're looking at. When we look at the OT wages uh, for callback, the um, callback line item two years ago was at $52,000. And then the Budget Committee last year brought it down to $25,000 in relation to where they saw the money expenditures. As you know, this is a bottom line budget, and that offset some of the other budgetary line items, especially the OT callback that, that we were seeing there. Um, it's been brought down again right now to $15,000. This is our line item when we transmit boxes. So uh, as an example, the casino fire last week cost about $3,500 in overtime for all of the parties that, that came in off shift. Um, that's the line item that we pay those people out of. Tonight's box seven will come out of that line item. So that's, that's what that represents. Uh, sick leave and vacation coverage, they've been adjusted to better reflect our experience rates. Um, with the, the coverage as it stands, you'll see that on the vacation side, we have already spent 221000 uh this year, but in a five-year average, we're looking at about one hundred and ninety, and I believe that to be accurate. Okay. Um, career incentives, that line item is actually for paramedic and AEMT, all of the incentives that have to do with uh, emergency medical services. And the funding that comes from that, you'll see that's a negative number. That's uh, transferred from the emergency services fund with, uh, that's the explicit reason for it. So the line item is there, but the money is actually transferred out of the account. Um, protective clothing shows a small increase of 3.28%. We do know that we are looking at uh, approximately a 5% increase from Bergeron. Uh, we are also not looking to buy six sets this year. Uh, however, that said, we have had a lot of new employees. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we're fitting uh, another candidate for um, a probationary firefighter. Uh, we had one hired two week, three weeks ago. Um, he's been outfitted for gear. All of these, all of the new firefighters require new gear. As you might imagine, it has to be fit pretty well, and that's the line item for that. Looking forward, I know that I had mentioned to you uh, in the past that I was looking to do program replacement. I'd like to do four sets a year because in 2019, all of the ones that were purchased by grant uh, come to pass, and they, they essentially expire as far as the, the um, limited life expectancy of fire turnout gear. Um, Gasoline, again, we've already discussed. Diesel fuel has gone up as a result of the gallonage that's been recognized um, in all of the line items as well. New equipment. There has been an adjustment there. The new equipment line item um, is for new equipment, as you might imagine. My intentions were to purchase hydraulic uh, rescue tools, uh, commonly referred to as JAWS, um, the JAWS of life. And engine four, when it was outfitted and was delivered to the beach station, came, we had to purchase hose for it. As you might imagine, it's a brand new engine, but it needed hose, it needed some tools, some of our tools, especially um, axes and halligan bars. They're, they're okay, they can be transported from one to the other. Uh, hose certainly needed to be outfitted. We needed new hose. Uh, most of our hose it can date back 35 years, and the expected life um, for hose, fire hose is 10 years. So we saw it fit to purchase new. This did not come with reels, and several of the, our other fire engines have a generator that's on board as well as reel system that allows us to use the jaws of life uh, to cut up cars and do what we might, might need to do to extricate uh, a person from a vehicle. We're looking at a portable system, battery operated, and so the initial thought was to put it in this line item uh, as well as an ice rescue sled. Um, previously at the budget committee, you saw that we were discussing ice rescue sleds actually for the last two years, and the call came in and said that, uh, well, you've never 
had a nice rescue. And last year, if you remember, in the winter time, we had a viral video that went out over uh, social media of two firefighters that rescued a dog that had gone through the ice. And in doing so, they employed a, a rowboat that was on the side of the side of the bank there. So it wasn't a rowboat. I'm sorry, <laughs> a leaky rowboat. A very leaky rowboat. They did a great job, but they were suited up. They were actually going to have to swim um, if it weren't for the rowboat. So uh, that was that idea um, for replacement equipment. Um, initially, as you are aware, I came in to request, I believe it was in June, it might have been late May, that I s sat in front of you to request um, money to purchase a new motor for Marine One that had a catastrophic failure. The head had cracked and it was no longer functioning. Um, it was a counter-rotating port side. Right now what I was requesting with this line item was that we would replace the starboard side as well. Uh, as it's the same age, it's actually now a year older, it's 14 years old, and the last thing I want to see happen to this, uh, especially in the situation that we're dealing with right now, is to fail when it's most needed, and at 14 years, I think we're pushing the outmost limit. We got a scary ground. Okay. What was that? Is that one of those scary clowns? Is that a scary clown here? I thought it was going to be a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions on the light items there? Well, Actually, I just yep. have a couple questions on sure. the two that you just brought up, the new equipment and the replacement equipment. So I see that you were saying, you know, what you were requesting, and it's reduced by administration, um, the new equipment, 22,950, and the and replacement equipment, 23,490. So, but I don't see what those would add, or actually, I don't see items that actually add up to those amounts. The, the initial so with the reduction. For, the reduction, right, is a, is a monetary value, but the reduction uh, of the, the total of the 48,950, if you look at my line item, was 41,000 for the hydraulic rescue tools. Right. And then 7,000, uh, I'm going to get it wrong, 190 maybe. Uh, I can look it up for the ice rescue sled, which totals the 48. Right, I understand that, but now with the reduction, so what is going to be sacrificed? Uh, that's going to be a decision we make if this budget's approved, uh, what we're able to afford at the time. Okay. Um, generally speaking, especially if it comes to the hydraulic um, extrication tools, they come in, in a pair. You have spreaders and you have cutters. Um, it may be that this year we get one, not the other. Um, we'll have to decide that at the end of it. All right. Okay. Finish? I'm done. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, just same thing on, on that question there, just a little uh, clarification. How many b bodies of water do we have that freeze over? I mean, is, is, in general, can you just, five, that would six, be potential yeah. for somebody I think going. It, I think it's five that we're most concerned about, obviously not the ocean, but, um, right. you know, we're dealing with some of the, the ponds in, um, in the back, uh, ice pond. I, th I believe we're at five bodies of water that we, uh, that we would need to okay. deploy. And there's never been a whole bunch of... Uh, the, rescues? No, there hasn't been a rash of ice rescues, certainly not. Um, there have been the need sometimes to call in and we get there and usually they're, they're you know, shin deep or whatever it might be. Uh, the, the canine in the water, that was a different scenario and that, that dog was very deep. Um, very simply could have been a child that day and it wasn't, thankfully, you know, knock wood, um, but the guys did a tremendous job getting out there and in the outfits that they had. All right, you're good. And then when you talked about replacing the engine on the uh, Marine yes, sir. One, on a rescue like you're talking about tonight, somebody on the on the rocks, right? Yes, sir. If if one engine were to go down, it would be underpowered in open water, and it, and it was an ebb tide or a flood tide, we'd be on the rocks too. We'd be in a, a lot of trouble, right? Absolutely. I mean, so I want people to realize that that it's not something that's just if an engine goes down and you're you're on a flat lake or something, right? If you've got a tide with wind and, and current and weather, it could be a real problem. Yep, absolutely, and surf, um, and you know, far out there, once you start dealing with the rocks too, they could be pounded up against the rocks, yep. so uh, at night, this is the last place that you want to be with one engine in the boat that requires to. Right, you absolutely, I mean, it's absolutely a necessity on, on a rescue like that. Correct. It's not a, it's not a, a, a you know, something else. Uh, the other thing is, on the overtime wa wages that you were talking about, when it was 325 actual last year. Yes, sir. But you figure the average is... Yeah, we did a lot of work between Fred and I looked at a lot of it, uh, Darian from Fire and Jamie and I all met, and we literally looked at those lines and went across a five-year period and a three-year period. We also looked at all of her, uh, she has sheets for every week's payroll, and we looked at that, how many shifts weren't filled, and so I think that these numbers better reflect, like Jamie pointed out, there was a lot of um, 
injuries and workers comp leave and stuff last year. So I think that attributed to the 325,000. But when you look at it over a period of time, those numbers uh, reflect, you know, the averages. So okay. we can only hope they don't have another year Amen. like that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, negative, sir. Rick? <clears throat> now I'm interested to hear your report. No. Thank you. I think we're all set. Okay. Yeah. All right, fire prevention. Um, I did make a request to, to Mr. Welch. Um, the only line item that he had deducted from at this point was the supplies and expenses. Uh, and I did request that we bring that back up to what I had requested. So the the regular wages, the part-time wages, that's all contractual. Uh, once we get down to this supplies and expenses, I did bump this up, and there is a reason. Um, last year, we saw 450 children for Fire Prevention Week. And we buy rulers, we buy magnets, uh, that you see them with the helmets and all that about. Um, we buy paper for the permits of assembly, and it's special paper, so it can't be photocopied. And our supply costs have gone up. This year, we're going to see by the end of, well, well, by this Friday. We had to move. We had a fire, and obviously our fire prevention officer was down there. Um, we're going to see 600 kids because we are including the third grade, so kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. We've also got Sacred Heart involved, and we have uh, additionally, I believe it's two or three homeschool classrooms that are coming to the fire department to learn about fire prevention. Um, last year was the first time that we incorporated homeschools, and it was just a tremendous hit, so we're including them this year. Those supplies were also given out uh, this weekend. Thank you very much for mentioning the open house. The guys did a tremendous job. Um, the Some of the helmets that were given out, coloring books, age-appropriate coloring books, with a message to call 911, be safe in the home. Um, that supply line item we asked to be leveled, and he did. He was very kind to do that, and we appreciate that. Uh, otherwise, no no major changes with fire prevention. Any questions on fire prevention? Oh, negative, sir. All right. Very good. Training. Um, under the training line, we have medical services. So that you understand what medical services is, before you get hired uh, in the fire department, you must pass CPAT, which is the initial uh, candidate physical agility test. Uh, it's a minimum requirement. There's a timing uh, aspect to it. You have to do it in a certain amount of time. You have to do a certain amount of firefighter-related skills. Uh, upon completion, that's only the beginning. Uh, there's a written exam as well. Then you do the CPAT. You come see us. We have to make sure that you're medically fit. So you're sent to a doctor to have a chest x-ray, EKG, blood work, um, drug and alcohol screen. There's uh, titer tests to make sure that you're vaccinated appropriately. And um, we anticipated having potentially three. We know three this past year for firefighters. So we put the line item in for three. Um, it's been reduced, but I can tell you that we just found a new vendor. And it's been a lot of work in finding one, but we feel very good about Clear Choice coming in. Um, they're able to provide it at a much greater value. Same test right now, so we'll be uh, we'll be happy with the, the line item as it stands on that. Um, the fire department training and recruitment has been reduced. Uh, what I had placed forward, and if you recall last year when I sat before you, I had talked about live fire training. Um, and the live fire aspect of it, there was a controversy over the title because people, they thought it was police training. However, live fire means it's active fire, and the firefighters have to work in concert with each other as a team, go in and extinguish a real fire. They're doing search and rescue. They're doing pump operations. Uh, we began that process already. We've had two groups go through it so far, and at the end, I believe it's next week, we have get pushed off because of the fire. Right, going. yeah. Our, uh, our training ground had burned down. So we're actually going up to Concord now for the next two. But we have not our fault. That's right. <laughs> so um, the story for another time. But um, we have two more groups to go through the fire training. As I stated when I was here last year, uh, this is equivalent to the firearms uh, requalification. This is group level training that they don't get otherwise, where they're unimpeded by anything else, and the entire group is able to function as a unit and as a team. I think it's exceptionally important to do so, especially now with so many probationary firefighters. We've got five brand new people in the last 18 months, and they all need to work together. And we have one coming in tomorrow, and we have a vacant spot that we're looking to fill. I think the test is next Monday. Yep. Right. So um, fire training is uh, exceptionally important. Additionally, we have open water rescue training. Uh, I needn't tell you that right now our guys are in the water, they're ready to go in if there's people on that boat that have, uh, if the boat's been capsized or whatever, those guys are going to be in the water swimming and they need to be trained. It would be very uh, imprudent 
as a fire chief to allow anybody who's not trained to go out into the open water to affect the rescue because they're going to become a victim themselves. The rescue training that we look to do, we bring in an outside instructor who's uh, world renowned. He has an exceptional uh, resume and reputation. We've seen him for eight years, I believe. Yeah. I think it's eight years that we've seen Mr. Mokri come in and do the training. He's exceptional at what he does. He teaches the guys to get on and off the rocks. He teaches them how to get in and out of the boat, how to haul people while they're doing the same. Um, we have been, through the generosity of the of the people over Center Rainbows, we've been uh, given an exceptional deal on purchasing equipment. So the equipment and the training go hand in hand. And with the amount of firefighters that we have right now that are untrained, especially the five new people, um, it, the request was made to to do open water training as well, which is, is certainly no small feat to uh, to get financially. So the total cost of that we had submitted was nineteen thousand five hundred. And that sums up that line item. Any questions on the training? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, so in 2015, the actual was uh, 11096 That's what you spent? Um, that's true. We also, we encumbered funds um, to do some training in that year as well, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, I think we encumbered funds. Um, for the, the live fire training, yes. For the live fire training, right. So. The, the following year, I believe that we were at $17,000 that we had requested in for that. Um, live fire training is, is an expensive deal because the, the group that's going is going off shift. So that's what that's about. Okay. It was for $17,863. And uh, budget this year was $32,000. you have spent 12000 to this point? Th there's several outstanding courses. Uh, a lot of the guys don't take classes over the summertime. As you might imagine, that's busy season, so they're not able to go to classes. Uh, the end of the year right now through the Fire Academy and through the, um, the EMS side of the world, they have a lot of EMS classes that we've been attending. Um, that money comes from, from uh, that part of our education. Uh, we see a, a, a great degree in the fall, so I anticipate that there will be a significant uptick on that. I know that the one that's not reflected here, we've already I've already spent enough money in the last two weeks to make that bump, but we haven't seen it as a result of timing. Okay. And you requested 68, and the administration was 35. Right. So under that, how much training would be cut? Uh, the swimmer program, certainly. Swimming program. Yep. And um, I would be hard pressed to accomplish the live fire. Um, two groups potentially would be able to do that. Okay. Not four. And, and how often? Do you, do you do marine rescues? Well, tonight. Tonight. Um, and, and as far as deployment, the boat was deployed. I believe we had a report. I asked uh, for a report today 26 times. There was a running log of the open water rescues, which are not always on the boat. Sometimes we just have rescue swimmers going out. The boat might be deployed and go around the jetty to come out. Uh, sometimes it's easier once you break the surf to get out to the boat than it is to come back through the surf onto the beach. Um, in a in a 22-month period, and I think that ended last uh, spring, we saw 18 rescues, open water. Okay. So okay. Recently we were just deployed to Rye and then turned around, they had a problem up there that they needed um, fixed and they weren't able to do it themselves. So, so you've been, I mean, it's fairly active, it's active. It's a very active, yeah, side of our life. Uh, with all the beachfront that we have in the rivers, we have two marine units. We have Marine 1, which is a 31-foot win, uh, winning off boat, and we also have Marine 2, which is a Zodiac. So they're both deployed regularly. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Phil? Negative, sir. No, I, 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 you're right. The live fire training is very important. Um, and, and so isn't the boat training. You don't want to ever have anybody out there that's not trained. And uh, knowing firsthand when that boat first came here and the training we had then, which was good, but it was nothing like the training you have now is just what you need. One of the things that I'm concerned about, and um, we could certainly, um, with with money, as Mr. Waddell had asked, with the money that's, that would be available, we could selectively go for the new hires, right, probationary firefighters. My concern with that is that for their first year, they're probationary firefighters. They're here, they have a medical experience, they've already come in, they've got their certifications and they've done their training. They're coming in as new firefighters and they need to learn to be firefighters first. Water rescue uh, swimmer training is fantastic, but that shouldn't be their primary goal. To me, become a firefighter first, then we'll give you the water rescue training. Um, we have one who's uh, over probation now, and he's doing an exceptional job, and I think that he would be great, a uh, great candidate to go to water rescue training. Uh, if we have to do piecemeal, it'll certainly be harder to get all of the new 
uh, firefighters through it, but that's one way that we might address it. Okay. Communications. Communications. Uh, again, wages. Um, the line item has gone up. We have had steps. We have had contractual obligations. Uh, overtime wages remains the same. Um, telephone, no change. Radio maintenance, we are, we've had actually a discussion today. Uh, there's a line item, and if you recall, I came before you when we were dealing, it was end of year last year, we were encumbering funds to do FDDA circuits. So our voters, which are like antennas around town, uh, they're connected by a landline to each other and to the comparator, which listens to which voter is working best. And those circuits used to be Alexander Graham Bell two wire. They were not monitored, so if they failed, we didn't know. That would be a voter that was out of service for us. So we upgraded to FDDA circuits. Fairpoint is the provider. They actually monitor it, and if it goes down, they're on it to um, fix it within, within I think it's 12, 12 hours, I believe, is their, uh, their contractual obligation. Um, and I, Don't quote me on that, but I believe it, it's a short duration. They find the problem, they go fix it. Um, this has upgraded our communications immensely because there was drop calls before this. There were problems with especially portable radios making the signal. Um, this has greatly alleviated a lot of that. So what we identified was that the contractual obligation for yearly maintenance is $6,528, and it should actually be in rentals and leases, and Christy and I actually discussed that today. Um, we are potentially going to be moving that line item south to rentals and leases, that 6528 which you don't actually see in this budget. They do see it under the detail. It's showing up under radio maintenance, but like Jamie said, after we had the discussion today, it should more accurately be reflected under rentals and leases. So I Next will be leaving that down. It won't change uh, money-wise there. Um, there was a cut at admin level, too, for that. So we would just, if it's the board's choice, we'll just adjust, you know, the difference there move the 6528 down and uh, deduct it from the fifteen thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars that um, administration has put forward okay any questions on the communications I have no questions seeing none okay okay um, fire department overtime wages under repair services uh, experiential view here we've been hiring firefighters to uh, assist us in transferring trucks as they go for their yearly service, preventative maintenance, uh, pump testing. We've also had uh, run, as you know, because we had to replace that single engine on um, Marine One, um, there was a lot of time spent dealing with that. So that line item was um, affected. That's where we went to line item for um, vehicles. And much of the boat work that was taken out then uh, was comfortable to that line, uh, accountable to that line item. We asked for 1500 and got it. So we appreciate that. The vehicle maintenance side of things, um, 125650 there was a lot of deferred maintenance on Marine One. Uh, as you may recall, we had a very stormy year last year. We didn't have a lot of snow, but we had quite severe storms with significant wind. Um, Marine One sits at dock throughout the year, and we do put it in a winter position, but with some of the storms that we had, there was some hull damage. Um, minor scratches is still seaworthy, but we're looking to get that repaired. Uh, there's also a situation where this is a strictly rescue boat right now. The pump was removed. There was a pump for uh, firefighting. Should that become necessary, if there's a vessel that, that was on fire, um, the pump is no longer functioning. It's been several years since it's uh, maintenance prior to my arrival in town. Even we, It just was deferred maintenance, let's put it that way. So here we stand. So that boat ha no longer has a pump on it. No. Firefighting you can't, capability. You can't get the parts for it anymore. It's a, I believe it's an English make. The cooling so. system is made in England. They don't make it anymore. So, any questions? Seeing none. We had an exceptionally light winter by comparison to the winter previous. Uh, you'll see that our electric and heating fuel are right in line with what I think would they would be. They're a little bit lower on electricity. Uh, we still have another quarter to go, and as you have seen outside, it's getting dark early. Lights coming on. I anticipate spending most of that. Um, there have been no other changes or requests. The pier maintenance we did reduce, and um, we're comfortable with that. The um, the at the end of the safety pier, there's a there's a uh, small shed that houses some equipment, 
it hasn't been maintained um, in several years. We're looking to get it painted, and that's pretty much where we're going. Some of the bumpers needed to be replaced after the storms as well. So, any questions on uh, buildings and maintenance? Seeing none. Any other questions for the so fire chief or deputy? So the final is is three million five hundred and forty seven thousand four hundred twenty six four hundred twenty six, which is a four percent increase. It is. And when you figure that three million dollars, when you take population of Hampton is on fifteen thousand. You divide that into the three million. It's about one hundred forty-one thousand dollars a year per person. So I don't think Mr. Bean could sell somebody insurance for one hundred forty-one thousand, one hundred forty-one dollars a year that would cover them twenty-four-seven, three hundred and sixty-five days a year. So I mean, it's an expensive proposition, but it's it, it you're getting your money's worth out of what you're getting into it. And and ours really isn't a fifteen thousand population. When you figure in our summer population, it goes much higher. That's correct. So, and, and I would have to tell you that I think that they're getting an exceptional service. I, I do too. I think they're getting an exceptional service for what we're paying for it. And I think it's, uh, I think it, you know, it, as we say every week and every month, it would be nice if the state kicked in a little bit more of their rooms and meals that hmm. because of what we do in the summer, it'd be especially fire and police and DPW, but they don't, so we live with what we have. But I think you're doing a great job. I think you put a good budget together. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Phil? Yes. Um, Jim is uh, on the hunt uh, with a, a good value proposition about what you folks do, Chief and Deputy Chief, and uh, you're uh, under 400 bucks an hour uh, around the clock to provide the outstanding service that you do, and there's real value in it. And it's a real challenge to, uh, to keep people healthy with the hard job you do. It's a real challenge to find people that are going to fill the ranks and continue to carry the, uh, the baton, if you will. So uh, great job last week. We know that um, uh, your budget does not include uh, benefits, does not include your pension costs, which add to that figure. But your core service and your core value is under 400 bucks an hour. And there are uh, attorneys pushing paper uh, in the state and throughout that uh, charge more than that. So very, very nice leadership. Uh, how many years you got on board now as chief? Four, uh, as chief, two. Two, and yes, yeah, deputy, how many? Same. And how many in the, in the uh, service to Hampton? 31. 31 years. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? I hope your report, it's, uh, it's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, thank you for all you do. Thank you, sir. I think we're, we're set. Thank you. Have a great night.